Hello and welcome to First Kids Worship! First Kids Worship! Let's get started! Hey guys, welcome to First Kids Worship. Come sit by the fireplace with me. We all talk, okay? Well, ever since I, went, I came to Mississippi, I moved to a new city. I never been to the real school, and I made zero friends from homeschool. Oh, boring. I wonder what God has to say about this. Roll clip! Hello everyone! Today we are talking about trust. Trusting in God. And you're probably thinking, well, I don't trust anybody in my life. How could I trust God? Well, we trust many, many people in our lives. We just don't realize it. And to do an example of trust, I have the love of my life right here. And we're going to do something that's called a trust fall. Are you ready? Ready. See, there are many people in our life that we trust. So how was it that I trusted Dave in order to do that trust fall? I mean... In our 30 year relationship, I think that's the very first time I've ever done a trust fall with him. How did I know that he was going to catch me? Well, it's because of the everyday things in life that I trust him with. Putting a check in the mail to pay our bills. Driving along the road with him. And it's the same thing with people in your lives. There are many people in your life that you trust on a daily basis. Your teachers, your bus driver, your parents. Every time you sit down at a meal, you're trusting your parents. Every time you open up a refrigerator and see food there, you know you can trust your parents. So how do you develop trust in God? Well, look at the things that God has done in your life. That's why a couple of weeks ago we talked about Acts, how to pray, and the tea stand for Thanksgiving. Be thankful for what God has done in your life. As you see all the things that he has done in your life, you're more apt to trust him more and more. So, be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for what God has given you. And that will grow your trust in God.
was, am I living it? What? Do I live in it? Yeah. So astounding. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste and see. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand, I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith and a life I never known to touch. And still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a live with the death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a live with the death. watching
dear God, I ask that you remind me every day, the T in ACT, that I'm thankful for all the things that you have provided and have done for me. Give me new eyes so that I can see what you protect me from, what you provide, the joy that you want me to have. Lord, when I see those things, I know that my trust in you will come stronger and stronger every day. That when it comes to those things that I think I can't do, that I might fail, those things that I think that might hurt me, but actually will give me strength, let me trust in you. Let me look back in the past days and all those things that you've done for me. Let me trust in the promise that you can take care of everything and you want only the best for me. Thank you, Lord. In your name, amen. I was alone out in the darkness Lost in the ocean of my sin Day after day the waves crash over me Lord, it's your light that draws me I raise my hands to you for mercy I need your love that won't let go Oh God, you're reaching down In you I found a rescue for my soul Do you tell me time again? No longer death in me. You're my victory, Lord. It's your life that draws me in. I raise my hands to you for mercy. I need.
What is up, guys? My name is Kelly, and welcome back to church. It is so good to see you. Today, we're going to learn about the story of Hannah in the Bible. Hannah wanted a baby so bad, she begged, she pleaded, and she prayed to God to give her a baby. But do you think that was God's plan? <laughs> okay, I hate to leave you with a cliffhanger, but it's time for us to stand and sing our Bible memory verse song of the day, and that's Jeremiah 29 11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a hope and a future. So go ahead and stand and sing. For I know the plans I have for you. Says the Lord They are plans for good and not for disaster To give you a future and a hope They are plans for good and not for disaster To give you a future and a hope Whoa, you guys sounded great. That Bible verse reminded me that God has good things planned for those who believe in Him. And we can hope that God has good plans for His children. But I gotta tell you that sometimes those plans don't seem so good. In fact, sometimes His plans make me sad or even mad. Well, Hannah knew all about God's plans and she wanted a baby for so long and it just never happened. In fact, people made fun of her because she couldn't have a baby. But you know what? Well, Hannah kept praying and praying to God, and well, let's see what happened. Slapstick Theater, Hannah and God. This is Hannah. Hi. Hannah was married to a man named Elkanah. Hey. But they were not able to have any children. This made Hannah sad. Aw. It's okay, come on. Every year, Hannah and Elkanah would go to the house of the Lord at Shiloh to pray to God and offer sacrifices. Hannah would cry out and pray to the Lord. She told God that if he gave her a son, she would give him back to him and that her son would serve God all the days of his life. <laughs> Hannah was so upset that one of the priests, Eli, thought there was something off about her. 
But Hannah told him that she had been praying because she had a broken heart. <laughs> Eli told her, "May the God of Israel grant the request you've made." Thank you. And then Hannah was no longer sad. In due time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Yeah! She named him Samuel, for she said, "I asked the Lord for him." Hannah did as she said she would. And once Samuel was a little older, she took him to the temple. Hannah prayed and gave thanks to God, and Samuel grew up in the temple serving the Lord. Whoa, that was a miracle! Even though Hannah was so sad and upset, she continued talking to God through prayer, and she didn't hold back either. And she was done waiting. The Bible said that she was filled with anguish and sorrow. But she never gave up. She continued to tell God exactly what she was feeling, and she was praying and asking God for a baby. And He finally gave her a son. That's right. Her son's name was Samuel. Wow. That makes me feel like God is listening to me, no matter how I feel. I can just tell Him and lay it all out there. So let's pull up this video to see what Tyler, Greg, and Caroline are up to, and I bet that they have something really good to teach us. Okay, guys. So, what are we gonna do today? I am so bored. I have officially run out of ideas of things to do. Tyler, are you even there? Hello, Tyler. Carolyn, I don't think he's there. I, I think he's frozen. Ty, buddy, are you there? Yeah, I think he's frozen. Right, this is officially the worst hangout ever. Ty, don't worry, buddy. I won't forget about you. You're my best friend. Ty, I need you, man. I can't live without you. Oh, hey. Sorry guys, I just had to go to the bathroom, so I threw up a screenshot of myself. Ew, gross. Ty, never do that again, man. I thought I lost you. I was ready to drive over to your house, man. Make sure you were breathing. Whoa, sorry guys. I I didn't think it'd be that big of a deal. What did I miss? Oh, please, please tell me you guys aren't still just talking on and on about how sad and bummed out we are because we have nothing to do. No, not really. I was just saying how bored we are and how we need to think of something. Wait, what was that? Guys, I think someone entered our chat. What? How did he get in here? I think he might have hijacked our chat. Hello, H helmet guy. Can you hear me? What do you want from us? Okay, guys, this is getting really weird. I think our chat has been compromised. I'm gonna leave. I don't want my computer getting a virus or anything. No, 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 no. Wait, Ty. Let's see what he wants. I think he's trying to tell us something. Helmet guy, what do you want? My name is Greg. I come in peace. My friends and I are glad you've joined our chat on the computer. Take us to your leader. Do you guys hear that? Yeah. Wait, it sounds like '80s space techno music. I kind of like it. I don't know what's going on right now. This is very, very weird. His dance moves are pretty cool. Whoa, this is so cool. Guys, I really think he wants us to dance with him. He's trying to communicate to us. I think this is why he joined our chat. He wanted us to have a virtual dance party. Come on, guys, get up. It's fun. Let's try it. Follow the move. Oh, oh. We gotta follow. He's communicating, Ty. I think this is their language. They communicate in da oh. through dance. It's getting fast. I feel it. I'm getting it. Caroline, you got this. Oh. Out the back. My back. My tie. My back. Uh, wait. Wait. Where'd he go? Did he really just disappear? Man, I was just starting to feel the music and find my groove. Man. I'm telling you guys, Helmet Guy is an elusive creature. He's like a digital ghost. He comes and goes with no warning. He was really trying to communicate with us. So long, Helmet Guy. Hey, Greg, that 
that was really weird. You know, this whole chat actually has been just super weird tonight, but I am glad it happened because it cheered all of us up a little bit, you know? We were all sad and bummed out at first, but you know, we just let the music take over and we danced. Hey, Tyler, you know that sort of reminds me of the Bible story of Hannah and her family. Whoa, really? People in the Bible had virtual dance parties too? No, Hannah and her husband were sad because they couldn't have a baby. Hannah was so sad that she went to talk to God about it and asked him for help. God answered her prayer by giving them a son and they named him Samuel. Yeah, I love this story. I mean, it's because the superhero origin story, it's like that. Like one of the most amazing guys in the Bible, Samuel. Wait, Samuel was an answer to his parents' prayers. The story reminds me that when I don't like what's happening, I can tell God that I'm upset. I mean, you know, just like Hannah did. I can always tell him how I feel, whether I'm happy, sad, angry, or hurt, or, I mean, God loves me, and his plans are good. Wow, that's so cool. So, one second, I get that we can talk to God through prayer, but are there any other ways that we can, like, you know, show God how we feel? Yeah, that's a great question, Ty. Sure there are. We, we can tell God how we feel by praying to him. We're singing worship songs to him, asking a parent to pray with us, oh, writing a letter to God, or we could even draw him a picture. I mean, when we do that, it makes him happy because it shows that we trust him enough to share how we really feel. He loves us and he wants to help us when we share our feelings with him. I couldn't agree more. God has good plans for Hannah's baby, Samuel. Hannah knew that she could trust God no matter what. That's why she gave her baby to God. Samuel grew up to do good things for God that we can read about in the Bible today. This story reminds us that we can tell God how we feel and ask him for his help anytime, just like Hannah did when she wanted a baby. Totally, Caroline, and I actually need to ask God for help right now too because I think I threw up my back when I was dancing with Helmet Guy, so I'm gonna go take care of the back. I hate to end our call early, but uh, I gotta go take care of this. Greg, go ice your hammy. I gotta head out too. Animal Crossing's not gonna play itself. See you guys. All right, bye guys. See you guys next week. All right, see you guys. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely the hammy. I gotta get back in shape. Let's. <sighs> Whoa, that makes me want to get up and dance too. I love that helmet guy. Sometimes when things aren't going well, I can do one of two things. I can either have a dance party or I can remember God's word. Our memory verse tells us in Jeremiah 20 and 11 that God has good plans for his children. And when we're upset, we can tell God how we're feeling no matter what we're thinking and no matter what we're feeling. He reminds us that he has something good planned in the midst of the chaos. See, God might not always give us what we want like he did with Hannah, but we can always trust that God has the best plan even if we don't understand it. You know why? Because God's plan for his children is that we get to spend eternity in heaven where there's no pain and no sadness. I cannot wait for that. That really gives me a hope that things will be okay, but wow. This story is just so good, I don't want to forget it. You know what I think we need? I need a quiz to help me remember. Not just any quiz, I need a space goat quiz! For thousands of years, people have looked up to the stars and wondered what's beyond. Thoughts of distant galaxies, strange planets, and possibly even life unlike any we've known on Earth. But no one could have ever imagined in the deep expanse of our universe lives one furry creature with four legs and a jetpack. Bah. His name is Space Goat, and he's here to help you. And he's here to help us. Here to help us answer life's toughest questions. What did Hannah pray to God for? Was it A, a new car? Was it B, a son? Or was it C, answers to a test? The answer is B. Hannah prayed to God for a son. Well done, cadets.
How did Hannah thank God for answering her prayer? Is it A. She gave Samuel back to God? Is it B. She ran a marathon for God? Or was it C. She threw a party for God? The correct answer is A. Hannah gave Samuel back to God, thanking him for her answer to prayer. When can we tell God how we feel? Is it A, only while eating pizza? Is it B, never? Or is it C, all the time? That is correct. We can tell God how we feel all the time. Great job, cadets. Till next time, stay spacey, cadets. How did you do? Did anyone get all three right? Oh, that's super impressive. Well, before we go, I want to tell you guys, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be upset but you can always bring your feelings to the one who made them, God, because he has a good plan for you and you can talk to him about anything just like Hannah did. See, I'm gonna remember this story for a long time because that's actually a great way to have hope when things aren't going so well. Remembering what God has done in your life and in other people, he can always bring about good things out of bad situations. Okay guys, remember to check out awesome activities and coloring pages on SaddlebackKids.com. We love you and I'll see you next week. Peace. Bye. 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 For this craft, you're gonna need this. Hopefully you better get inside. So, first, let's take Okay, so it, it says to tie these together right here to create a hanger, yet there's no hole and there's no sticky. Good thing I already have tape. Uh, so I'm just gonna, if you don't have a hole or anything, cause I don't, then just use tape. Put them together. Found the darker blue one, the one without any words. And just do that. And boom, you have your hanger. Probably should have done it on the other side. Oh well, you won't see that. Now take the lighter blue, peel this off, put it right here. Sorry, I was looking at something. Perfect. Now take, let's see. So I put this right, right here. Will this fit? No, it will not. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hands. And put them in the middle, right here. Then we're gonna take this. Peel that off. And you want it going down like that. 
and glue it as low as you can, even if it's over the hands. So, no. There we go. There we go. And then write your name on this. A marker would be preferable. I just happen to have a pencil here. So, boom, my name. Then you'll have two crosses, but one on either side of the hands. That's a wobbly cross, but that's okay. Then take the heart that says, so I pray every day. Put it right here. And boom, you're done. Oh, now I get it. Hannah wanted a kid as much as I wanted friends. She was. Oh, my God. And then a year later, boom, shakalaka. She got herself a kid. Well, do the same. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, God. But, except, I'll just go next door and ask if, or ask for a friend for a play date. This is Spencer signing off. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us for First Kids Worship. First Kids Worship. See you next week.